Today, we have the last thing to ever happen in the universe by our good friends Kurzgesagt. I've missed a few of their most recent uploads and it's time to get caught up, so let's go ahead and dive right in. The universe today is happy and healthy, with exciting things going on. Well... But at some point, the night will turn dark. Mm -hmm. Everything that once was will peacefully sleep forever. It'll happen at some point, right? There's a bunch of different theories about how, when, why, etc., etc. But it will happen. It's inevitable. But what is the last thing that will ever happen? And when will it be? What it a star safari. There is such a thing, and you probably haven't heard about it. Let's hmm. travel to the end okay. of the universe and look at the last thing. What is the last thing? That is insanely bright. That needs to go away for a sec. Wow. What is the last thing, do we think? So it's quite possible that in the very, very, very distant future, the only place that will have enough change and energy to siphon to survive and sustain life will be a black hole for trillions and trillions of years. So... Is the last thing a black hole evaporating? Is that what the last thing is? Hmm. I don't know. After Let's find out. Birth, our universe was a sleepy baby, warm and dark, filled with swirling clouds of hot hydrogen and helium. The story of creation is a story of this gas and where it will end up. Mm -hmm. Shortly after, the universe got busy making the first generation of stars. Gravity took they were its massive toll. and lived violent lives, forging new elements. Only to oh my god, them my cup blew up. Count this stuff is getting chroma keyed. <laughs> find the gas available in the universe, cycling matter around. <laughs> That's each amazing. Generation giving most of its gas and fresh elements to the next. <laughs> but not all gas oh, is returned. It's a Mario pipe. Every time a new generation cool. of stars forms, they also make more and more red dwarfs that burn slowly and live for trillions of years. When they yeah. die, they don't give their gas back to the universe, but turn into white dwarfs. So red dwarfs lock up more gas forever. Mm -hmm. Some more gas is locked forever in other remains of dead stars. And of course, the gas being locked up forever is a bad thing because it cannot reform into stars. Once it's trapped in a white dwarf, once it falls into a black hole, etc., it can no longer form into new stars. So eventually all that gas will be used up and then no more star formation at some point. Neutron stars and black holes, which is bad as it reduces the material available for new stars. Mm. Today, the universe is a great home for us and will remain so for billions of years. But yep. most of the gas has been used up or trapped. Over 90% of the stars that will ever be born have been born already. Wow. To get to the last thing to ever happen, all other things need to happen first. That's kind of scary that 90% of stars have been born already. But... Also, let's talk about the fact how life can't exist before a certain point because you need star formation and star death in order to create the heavier elements that life needs. So, yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a really good thing. Uh, let's just really quickly go here. Perfect. Okay. Okay. The next few hundred billion years will be fun and a great time for galactic exploration. These but visuals. Step by step, large stars and stars like our sun will die out. Wow. Eventually, almost all that the stars bright. will be red dwarfs slowly dying. The end of everything, but not quite. Mm -hmm. In a few trillion years, yeah. the cosmic gas will finally have run out. About 88% of the mass of every galaxy will be white dwarfs, 2% neutron stars and black holes. Really? 10% gas wait, giants, wait, 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 wait. White dwarf. 2% neutron. 88% white dwarfs and 2% neutron stars and black holes? That seems a bit interesting. Neutron <laughs> stars and black holes, and about 10% gas giants and sad brown dwarf losers. <laughs> white dwarfs are the corpses of old stars. Not much bigger than Earth, but on average, as massive as half our sun, Way more massive. Some even much more. This makes them the third densest objects in the universe, after neutron stars and black holes. Wow. About a million times denser than the sun today. Since they used to That's be crazy. stars, their surface can be as hot as 150,000 degrees. 
Uh -huh. White dwarfs are dim, hot, dense spheres that don't do anything anymore. Jeez. But eventually, even white dwarfs will die because they're slowly losing their heat. It takes at least yeah. 10 trillion years, more than 700 times longer than the current age of the universe. As they what? will die because they're slowly losing their heat. It takes at least 10 trillion years, more than 700 times longer than the current age of the universe. 10 trillion? As they their cooling down, the universe around them will irreversibly grow dark. As trillion. More, and more white dwarfs burn out and turn into dead husks. Black trillion. Dwarfs. Spheres of death as cold as space itself, invisible against the dark backdrop. Over trillions and trillions of years, Jeez. every object in every galaxy is eventually either ejected into the void or its orbit decays and it will fall into the central black hole and be destroyed. Mm -hmm. In about a quintillion years, all galaxies have evaporated and every object is on its own in the A quintillion years. That is so far in the future. So ridiculously far in the future that as far as we're concerned, it may as well never happen. It's just so far out. Like that is an absolutely ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, it, it may as well never happen. Center of its own observable universe, emptiness as far as can be seen in any direction, traveling through black nothingness. Still, there are things that will happen. Black holes are dying, slowly. They'll fizzle away by emitting Hawking radiation yeah. until they're so small that they die in a final flash of light. Hawking radiation was always super interesting to me because of the virtual particles that pop into existence and then annihilate each other. But when it happens on the border of a black hole, one will go out and escape the black hole and the other will fall into the black hole. And so the virtual particle becomes an actual particle. And at that point in time, that mass has to come from somewhere because energy is equivalent to mass. Energy can be mass and mass can, you know, turn into energy. The Albert Einstein E equals MC square. You can convert back and forth, but that mass has to come from somewhere. So the mass comes from the black hole to give that virtual particle that escaped an actual mass and create a real particle, a real physical particle. And over trillions, 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 trillions more years, the black hole will very, very slowly start to decay through that process. It's crazy. But is there really ever an end to change with all the virtual particles popping into and out of existence? This will take about a Google years, 10 to the power of 100 years until the last supermassive black hole dies. A Google the years? So absurd, there's nothing to compare it to. Wait, what the heck Maybe was that bird doing? Dies. A number so absurd, What in the world is going on here? Maybe some living beings could have survived around black holes, but even this science fiction option ends now. Yeah. After this unsettling amount of time, we're not even close to the end. Now really? is the time of the black dwarfs. It turns out there's some weird physics going on inside the dead husk of stars. Who would have thought? The weird physics of black dwarfs. A black dwarf is a sphere the size of Earth, as massive as a star, but almost as cold as absolute zero. Who is stars that face? stay alive because of their intense heat Stop and their cores. So why do black dwarfs don't like collapse it. into a black <laughs> hole? What keeps them together? Deep inside a black dwarf, matter is squeezed to densities millions of times greater than anything we see on Earth. Okay. The pressure is so great that electrons can't combine with the nuclei to form atoms. Instead, matter is weird, degenerate. The nuclei are compressed by the weight of the star. Lock so that happens in a black dwarf? Now, how dense are black dwarfs compared to a white dwarf or a neutron star? Would they be approximately as dense as a white dwarf? Or maybe a little denser because it's starting to lose its energy? into a rigid lattice while the electrons form a plasma between them and these electrons hold the star together we're yep. simplifying but imagine matter as a subway train and electrons as passengers if there are empty seats passengers spread out because they care a lot about their personal space but as a black dwarf is so incredibly dense this is like squishing more and more passengers into our train gravity is pushing in trying to collapse it 
The passengers are forced to sit and stand close together, which they hate. And so the passengers, mm -hmm. our electrons, try to push out against gravity as hard as they can. Yeah. This way, the electrons that are having a horrible yeah, Pokemon time in the crowded train that's the Black Dwarf hold up the star. Everything else in the universe may have crumbled already, but these tiny particles push against each other until the end of time. Or <laughs> they would, if quantum mechanics didn't ruin everything. Oh, there's Super a banana. A lot. When particles get close enough, sometimes they can jump at each other and fuse together. A process called really? quantum tunneling. This fuse happens together? constantly in stars because of their intense heat. Mm. It's one of the key reasons stars can fuse elements into new ones. But it also happens at a temperature near absolute zero. Just, well, mind-numbingly slowly. This is the final step to creating the last interesting thing to what? ever happen in our universe. Here, in this lone black dwarf, something fantastic occurs. Nothing happens for a trillion years. Okay. Nothing at all. Can you imagine that? But that was then, scary. <laughs> a single fusion reaction. Two carbon nuclei combined by quantum tunneling to become magnesium. Another 100 trillion years pass. It happens again. Then nothing for another bazillion years. Oh. No. Oh, two oxygen nuclei combine into silicon. As eons pass, the nuclei in the frozen black dwarf slowly combine. So it's basically it's just heavier nuclei. super unlikely. And these take even longer to fuse, but given enough time, they eventually will. Hmm. Remember the breathtaking amount of time it took for a supermassive black hole to evaporate? That's a brief moment in comparison to what's going on here. The difference oh between a second God. and trillions of years has lost all meaning. Over a time so absurd that it has no name, nuclei keep fusing into heavier elements. Jeez. Until, when silicon nuclei fuse, they form nickel-56. Nickel-56 is radioactive, which means it's unstable. Ah. And when it eventually decays and turns into iron, it emits two positrons, antimatter electrons. Okay. And these two positrons find two electrons and annihilate them and themselves. Which is oh. a problem. Remember how the uncomfortable electrons produce the pressure to hold the star together? Yep. Destroying the electron means fewer friends to help them hold up the star. Losing an electron uh, does not so give them more then space to scratch their butts. Eventually gravity will win. Harder, the walls closing in on those that remain. In the case of the most massive black dwarfs, this is catastrophic. Bit by bit, the black dwarf turns into a sphere of iron and mm. more electrons are annihilated. Yep. For at least 10 to the power of 1,000 years, almost, but not quite forever, there's no visible change in the entire universe. And <laughs> then, finally, the last thing to ever happen happens. The black dwarf has lost one too many electrons. It can no longer support its immense mass and goes <laughs> into an uncontrolled collapse, a supernova. It first implodes and then explodes as bright as a galaxy and fills the empty universe with light again. Just nothing for basically ever. And then all of a sudden a supernova. <laughs> okay. A beautiful moment nobody will get to enjoy. And then as quickly as it began, it's all over. Darkness huh. again. Emptiness. Wow. That was the last thing that will ever happen. Okay. The universe may now be truly dead. But don't be bummed out about it. Why is there this so much is time so far left in the video in the future then? That forever hardly describes it. Today the universe is the best place it could be for us. And you can sleep tight tonight, knowing the last interesting thing that will ever happen is forever long away. Yeah, I mean, you're never gonna live that long. Don't even worry about it. For now. Even if we mastered immortality tomorrow, there you're not gonna you're not gonna make it. You know, biological immortality. Something will happen to you. Accidents happen. Even if accidents didn't happen and you became so extremely lucky, lucky to have survived basically the entire lifespan of the planet, the planet's going to get swallowed up by the sun. At some point, that's going to happen. At some point, the sun is going to die. At some point, we'll probably be in a black hole. <laughs> Or something, you know. Black Dwarf, maybe. That was quite interesting. I love these super, super, super deep time ones. They're very cool.